Welcome to Hollywood Rage. My name is Amy and I want to help you go further with your online selling. In today's topic, I'm going to cover 10 ways that you could be hurting your Poshmark or eBay business, so stay tuned. Okay guys, so first I would like to know who of you likes to play the slot machines? I know I like to play the slot machines, but I don't do it that often because I don't like to lose money. But every so often I will go play and I really enjoy it when I do because when that machine hits, I get a certain high off of it, right? So sourcing is kind of like that in my opinion. The fun part of being a reseller is that we get to shop. Even though the items aren't for us, it's still fun to shop and source inventory. It's fun to go out yard selling or to thrift stores. And when we find a good deal, we get a high from that. It's like playing the slot machines. And when the machine hits, you get that high and finding the deals is the same way. But the problem comes when we start accumulating all of these items. Items that we bought, they're just sitting there and it's money that's being left on the table. If it's not listed, it can't sell. So I'm active in several Facebook reselling groups and there was one lady in there that was asking for advice on if it was better to list a few items or to get everything listed quickly. And the way that I look at that is if you have a rare item or even an item, a piece of clothing um, that someone wants it's, and it's just sitting around, well, there may be a person on Poshmark or eBay um, looking for that particular item. And if it's not listed, then they can't buy it. And what's going to happen is that buyer is going to go find that item somewhere else. They're not going to return to eBay in a month and to check and see if that item is on there. So when a buyer wants it, they want it now. They don't want to wait. So it's better, in my opinion, to get those items listed as quickly as possible and just have them on the platform. And if um, you're worried about not having items to list often, well, look at it this way. The more items that you list, the more items you're going to sell, which is going to give you more money to go out and source. And so it's going to be a constant items coming in, items going out of your business. And it really needs to be a repetitive process of that. Um, if you're having a lot of items that are coming in, but not so many leaving, then maybe you need to look at your prices, return policy, shipping costs, your photos, or even your keywords. It's very important to find a balance in your sourcing and listing. Otherwise, your inventory is going to take over your home, office, or workspace, creating a bunch of chaos. Now, I know some people, they go out and source every single day and they're able to go back and list everything um, the same day and stay really caught up on their listing. But for me, I go out because I don't like to shop. I go out and I source in big quantities. So I like to shop in big spurts. I'll go out, drop several hundreds of dollars on merchandise, bring it back to my office, and me and my assistant will get it all listed. And I usually don't go back sourcing until it's all listed. But um, I like to buy big bundles and list them in long stretches. This makes it to where I constantly have work for my employee to do. So the second thing is, are you providing good listing details to get the sale? Are you describing the item in full? Are you providing measurements of the item? Measurements are a big thing if you are selling clothing. Buyers don't want to buy items online that they cannot try on without knowing for sure that it's going to fit them. And honestly, providing measurements in your listing is going to cut down on your return rate. Are you taking pictures of the tags that are on the items? Buyers like to actually see the tag. The tag has the size on it. It has the fabric content. It gives them a lot of information about that item. And are you taking close-up pictures of the details of the items? Are you taking pictures of the flaws? If your item has any flaws, you want to be sure to describe the flaws in the listing and take good, clear pictures of the flaw. This will help prevent returns and negative feedback. Best practice is really to try not to list items with flaws because today many buyers are shopping on mobile and they don't see the item description a lot of times. So the flaws can possibly be overlooked by a buyer if they are not paying close enough attention. 
Okay, guys, and so the third thing is, if you are a seller on Poshmark, are you working on building your following? Many people don't realize why this is so important, but it really is very important, and let me tell you why. First, because every time that you share your closet, it is going out to your followers. So if you have 10 followers, it's going to be 10 people that are going to see it. If you have 100,000 followers, then possibly 100,000 people can see that item. Do you see where I'm going with this? The more followers that you have, the more eyes will be on your items. So do you want to know how to build your following on Poshmark? The first thing that you could do is to find sellers that sell items that are similar to yours and go into their items and find the likes on their items, follow the people that are liking their that seller's items, and if they have likes that on their items that are similar to yours, then most likely that buyer will like your items and follow you also. But the single most easiest way to build your following is to follow new poshers. The reason for this is because new poshers are excited about being on Poshmark and they want to build their following as well. They want to find closets to follow. And so most likely if you follow them, they will follow you back. Most new poshers want to reach ambassador status. So they do a lot of sharing. Most people share items from their feed. So this will help you to get your items viewed the most. And let's face it, experienced postures or postures that have been on the app selling for a while, um, they tend to um, slow down on their community shares and they focus more on self shares. So, um, if you have a larger closet, then self shares, they could get exhausted over time and it leaves very little time for community sharing. So that's why it's important to catch new postures. And if you do these things, you can gain thousands of followers in a day. So this brings me to my next thing. Number four, are you sharing your closet consistently? If you are selling on posh part time, or just to have a little extra money, then share your closet as you wish. You truly get out of posh what you get into it. If you want to actually earn a living and be able to pay your bills by selling on Poshmark, then you have to treat it like a full-time job. You need a schedule. If you want to sell full-time and you're going into it thinking it's easy money and you won't have to work, then you're wrong. I work every day, Monday through Friday, approximately 7 a.m. to 6 p.m., sometimes even later. And um, I do take the weekends off, but I get up on Saturday mornings and I ship out all of my orders. But for me, being a reseller is a full-time job. It's just that I don't have to ask to be off to go to appointments or to take my mom to the doctor. And um, it's not that it's easier work or less work than having a full-time regular job. It's just that you have more freedom and you can't be told no when you need to be off. So back to the sharing, you should share your closet at a minimum of three times per day. Personally, my closet gets shared four times a day. I do it twice and my assistant does it twice. I do it at 7 a.m. and he does it at 12 p.m. and 7 p.m. again. And then I do it at 10 p.m. Now, before I had an assistant, I shared it three times per day by myself. And number five, are you responding to messages from buyers? I can't tell you how many times buyers have asked me questions and within five seconds of giving them an answer, I get a notification that the item just sold. Now, sometimes buyers can ask pretty annoying questions, right? Like they want to know if you can model the item for them. Um, they may ask you to hold the item for them. Um, they want free shipping on the item. And so you're thinking like really I'm not going to go pull the item from my inventory, set up my photo station, put the item on, upload a pic, only for you to turn around and say, no thanks, I don't like it. So of course that's how we feel, right? But as sellers, we're not going to say that to them. Just be courteous and reply back with, I'm sorry, but we do not model the clothes, but the photo is a great representation of the item. Or a simple, I'm sorry, but we don't do holds, but check back with us to see if we still have the item available when you are ready to purchase. 
Just be sure to acknowledge your buyer and also when the buyer asks questions in the comments and the comment section shows that you did not respond back to the buyer, it doesn't look good to other buyers. So you want to make sure that you always acknowledge um, messages or comments from the buyers. So number six is, are you shipping your order, orders out on time? Unlike eBay, Poshmark gives you several days to ship out your packages. And even though you have more time to ship out orders on Poshmark, you really want to make sure that you are shipping out your orders as quickly as possible. And here's why. You want to create repeat buyers. We live in a hurry up world today where people want things and they want it now. So you want to wow your buyers. Poshmark packages actually ship really quickly once they get scanned. And you want to take advantage of that. You want your buyer to get your item and say, wow, that was fast. Creating a first impression is everything when that package arrives in your buyer's mailbox. It is the first impression that the buyer actually has of you as a seller. So you want to create return buyers. Don't just think about the now. Run your business in a way that creates longevity and impressing buyers creates return buyers, which creates success for you in the long run. With eBay, you want to ship out your items quickly within a day if possible, but you want to make sure that you ship within the time that you have specified on eBay or else your account will get dinged and eventually, if this happens too much, you will come down from top rated seller to above standard seller, which will really affect your sales. But again, even on eBay, you want to create that wow factor to have return buyers. Number seven, are you taking advantage of the free shipping supplies through USPS? Now, cute is great, right? But you know what's better? Free. Free is always good. The little cute poly bags are nice, and I'm sure that they wow buyers. But one thing that I've learned over my years in selling online is that you have to cut costs in this business as much as possible. Poshmark pays for priority mail shipping, so take advantage of that and use priority mail shipping supplies. The padded envelopes and the Tyvek envelopes are great for shipping clothing on Poshmark. For larger orders, the priority mailboxes are great for that. If you are selling on eBay and you have items weighing in under a pound, I do recommend mailing those items in a poly bag that you purchase. And this is where those cute little polys come into play. Personally, I use the quarterly coupon that we get from eBay to purchase eBay, eBay branded poly bags. And I ship all of those, my first class items in those. I do keep some cute pink poly bags on hand for when I get orders on other platforms like my website or Instagram or Facebook, but I really try to save those just for that. But I do like free and anything that doesn't eat into my profits. If you don't know this, you can order free shipping supplies from USPS website and have them delivered directly to your home or your place of business. Number eight, are you using the USPS pickup service? Now, I know that this isn't possible for some people to do because of where you live or where you work from. But for those of you that can, you really should be taking advantage of the postal service pickups that are totally free. All you have to do is go online, schedule a pickup for the following day, and now usually I never know exactly how many packages I will have. And when you schedule a pickup, it's going to ask you to put in the number of packages and the total weight of them. But don't stress over that because all they're trying to do is get an estimate. They just really kind of want to know, should they send a truck to pick up your packages or can your mail carrier pick up the packages on the regular route? Scheduling pickups is going to save you time from going to the post office and it's time that you could spend going um, sourcing or listing items. You will also save gas so that's that's enough reason for me right there why I don't go um, because I like anything that saves time and saves money. So like I said I know that many of you can't do the pickups and if you can't that's fine. Also, I know some people will walk their packages to the post office and that is their exercise for the day. And if that's the case, then that's great because you're actually getting a benefit out of doing it. 
Now, I have a great rapport with my mail carrier. He allows me to just stick my packages into a large uh, mailbox that I have without having to schedule anything. And he picks them up for me every day. But we have an agreement about this because he knows that every day there's going to be packages for him. And so there's no need to schedule anything. Now, if I have lar pa large packages or um, more packages than what will fit inside of the mailbox, I do schedule one and leave the packages um, at my front door. And um, that way he will know that I have large packages by doing it that way. Now, I did have my husband purchase and install a super large mailbox, and it's been great because it can hold probably um, 25 to 30 soft packages. So that may be something that you might want to consider if you are in an area where you can leave your packages in your mailbox. And number nine is, are you using social media sites to build a following and promote your items? Now, one way you can do this is to insert a business card that has your social networking sites on it and ask your buyers to follow you there to be, so that they can be notified first of new arrivals, um, sales, or anything like that. And buyers can also purchase from you on these sites, which helps you to avoid selling fees. And we all like to save on fees. And today's world is all about social media and building your brand. And if you're not using these methods, then you could be leaving money sitting on the table. Now, is it necessary to use social media to sell on platforms like eBay, Poshmark, or Macari? No, absolutely not. You can be successful at selling without social media. But if you want to go further in your selling, social media can help you do that. Number 10. Are you letting the little things get to you? Are you letting the questions, questions from the buyers, like the ones that I just mentioned, get up under your skin? Are you upset because the buyer left you four stars instead of five? Are you upset that the buyer didn't leave a love note? Are you getting worked up because the buyer did not accept their purchase yet and they received it two days ago? Well, guess what? None of this stuff matters. Don't even pay attention to any of it eBay has twisted their feedback system so bad over the years that feedback on eBay really means nothing anymore. I never look at anyone's feedback before I buy something now because I know my purchase is covered through PayPal. And guess what? No one sees any of that stuff on Poshmark. Anyways, if a buyer has not accepted their order, just be patient. Poshmark releases the funds automatically after three days. I can't tell you how many times I've been on Poshmark groups and someone is really ranting about receiving four stars or a buyer hasn't set, accepted their order yet. Everyone is not always online like we are as a reseller. Most buyers like to buy it and forget it. They are not thinking about that they need to go in to accept the order. Patience is truly a virtue. So just have some patience and your funds will be released. The only time I think you should get worked up is if there is a case open. But even then, I don't really think you should get yourself worked up because it's all a part of business. Okay, guys, so that's it for today. Those are my 10 ways that I feel you could be hurting your selling business. I would love for you to comment below and tell me the things that you may be doing to hurt your business. What is really holding you back from going further? If you haven't already hit the like button on your way out, please be sure to do so. And if you want more tips and tricks like this on how to go further with your selling, be sure to subscribe to our channel, follow us on Instagram at Hollywood Rage, and join our Facebook selling group Poshmark and eBay Moneymakers. Have a great day.